Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Manuel, and today I present Augury, which is a software that predicts visual design appeal across demographics. So um, every, every poster, every house wall or website is judged within a split second. The goal of visual design is to make uh, this first impression positive. But how do we define good design? Well, the success metric for visual design quality <laughs> is simple. Does it attract your audience? But knowing the aesthetic preferences of your audience is complex, and researching those preferences is costly, especially when you're in a web design context. This is why we created Augury. Augury calculates um, the website's design likelihood of attracting a specific demographic group. And uh, here is how we do that. As a first step, we quantify visual design characteristics. Augury breaks down a website into its elements, like the number of images, the text, the dominant colors, and so on. For this, we use the OpenCV library in a Java interface and handle the input and output with a Node.js wrapper. Secondly, we promote online experiments to collect data about visual perception and aesthetic preference. Participants are <coughs> exposed. <laughs> Sorry, I need this. Participants are exposed to a design screenshot for a split second, and then are asked to rate it for visual appeal. For these experiments, we use Vue.js in the front end, and Express middleware and uh, Mongo to store the data. And this is all hosted in the Amazon cloud. Third, we use the demographic information, aesthetic preferences, and image metrics to build statistical models. These models enable us to map the quality of a design. For example, we can tell a designer if their work is too cluttered or too minimal for their target demographic. And that's how Augury works in a nutshell. Along the way, we made a couple of mistakes. Um, for example, as we developed this software, we learned that we don't have to implement every functionality in order to test our product. We figured out that a prototype of a feature can also be a PDF that we give to clients who tell us if that's actually something they want to they wanna buy. Um, as an advice, um, when you choose a technology stack to implement a web application or any other tech item, um, have in mind that you need to scale at some point. So don't keep it super easy all the time. Um, at some point, um, you have to scale, and when your base code is crappy, well, that is really a pain in the ass. Um, also, fancy technology is much more fun and attracts developers to work with you. Uh, another advice is to reach out and find people who want to collaborate with you at a very early stage. Um, so that, that enables you to test ideas in a real-world scenario, and then you can prioritize which features you actually want to build into your final product. And um, ultimately, such a collaboration needs to feel really easy. Like, don't waste time with anybody who makes it complicated. Um, you know, that's really um, a deal breaker in the beginning. Um, our next steps are to grow the team, advance our technology, and expand our budget. Surprise, we're a startup. Um, and uh, our goal is to provide applicable advice on aesthetics optimization. And we also wait for further NSF funding and will contact venture capital this summer. Also, we are looking for a board member with um, software launching experience. So if that speaks to you, um, please feel free to reach out to us. And here are the many ways to contact us. Thank you. Yes, please. <laughs> oh well. So we con continuously uh, collect data about um, uh, aesthetic appeal across demographic groups, and uh, we also observe how that shifts over time. There are also design trends who, you know, 
bring a new kind of design pattern on the market, um, which then some bigger brands adapt, and then they might teach some of what is the newest thing that is very fancy, very elegant. So we monitor that over time, and our plan is to have a feature in the future that also can tell you, hey, your website is not only te on a technology um, side outdated, but also on an aesthetic side, uh, really behind your, the preferences of your target group. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, the question was how we collect the data. So uh, recently we, we, we launched like online experiments, which are web-based applications, and then we promoted them through social media, in that case Facebook, to get some data from US located baby boomers, which was a great success. We also collaborate with um, open source online experiment um, platforms where we launch these experiments as well. Yeah? Um, do you feel that this technology will help accelerate design innovation or slow it down? Uh, we hope that this fosters diversity in creativity. Um, there are trends that, especially smaller brands or companies, uh, mimic the, the market leaders and want to look like Apple, want to look like uh, Nike or whatever. And we hope that by showing like, hey, specific target demographics have a very unique taste, that this um, encourages designers actually to, to make it a bit more special and not so much like the, the, the average design pattern that we see every day. That's a great question. There are already a couple of tools uh, which... Can, can you repeat the question? Mm -hmm. uh, which tell you uh, how people with visual impairments see your design. So this is not really in our focus, because there are already tools, but it is, it's definitely a consideration for the future to, to have that feature embedded. Yeah. All right. One more, or...? Please. So the question was uh, how we develop the metrics. Um, the uh, computer vision library OpenCV provides us with a number of tools to break down an image. It tells us what is mo most likely to be text, what is, an, what is a, an, a picture embedded. And um, we then collected data where we asked people, is this design complex or not, or not so much? And then we could um, teach models to actually uh, tell us if you have like 90% text, then your design is very complex, for instance. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>